Hey guys, welcome back to the Cinema 4D tutorial series on constraints. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about IK. IK is just another form of a constraint, and I'm going to show you how you can use it to rig your mechanical objects. So as you can see, I put together a very quick mock-up of a robotic arm using cubes and cylinders. And this uses three rotational points. We have the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Now usually when you think of IK, you think of something like character rigging where you have to create a bone chain and then you'll have to weight the mesh to those bones. But in the case of mechanical rigging, there's nothing here that's going to be deformed. Everything is considered hard surface. So there's really no need to use bones. So instead, what we'll do is we'll use null objects. So what we want to do is we want to place a null object at each one of the rotation points, one for the wrist, one for the elbow, and one for the shoulder. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. The first way is to select the object, hold down the Alt key, and then go to Create Object Null. That will place a null object at the location of the object that you had selected. But as you can see, it made that selected object a child of the null. So you need to make sure that you drag that object out. Otherwise, if you have to correct the orientation of the null, and that object is a child of it, it's going to move with it. Now there's also another way of doing this, which is a little faster. So if you select the object and go to the CDIK tools, which if you don't have yours docked in a palette, you can go up to plugins, CD tools, CDIK, and we want to click on CD add root null. That will add a null object in the location of the object that you had selected. But as you can see, it did not make it the parent of the selected object. So now we need to do one for the elbow. So we'll select the elbow, add the root null, and we need to do one for the shoulder. Now if you remember from one of the previous videos in this series, I told you that the IK expression uses the Z axis to do the IK calculation. So what that means is that we're going to have to make sure that these three null objects are oriented correctly. So we'll start with the shoulder joint. So we'll select the shoulder joint null and you can see that the axis is pointed in the wrong direction. What we want to do is orient this so that the Z axis will be pointing at the next joint down the chain. So right now the chain over here in the object manager is not put together yet. We haven't yet set up the hierarchy the way it needs to be set up, but we're going to do that later. But for now, the next joint that goes down the chain would be the elbow. So what we want to do is have the Z axis point directly at the elbow joint and then the elbow joint will point directly at the wrist joint. So a quick way of doing this would be to select the shoulder joint hold down control and select the elbow joint and then call up the command for the aim constraint and now we can delete that tag and if we select the shoulder joint you can see that now it is oriented correctly so now we can do the same for the elbow so we'll select the elbow control click the wrist and call up the command for the aim constraint now we can delete the tag and if we select the elbow, you can see that now that elbow joint, that null, is now oriented correctly as the Z axis is now pointing at the wrist. Now with the wrist joint, we can select that and then we can shift select this little end piece down here that's supposed to be acting as the hand. And we'll call up the aim constraint. And now we can delete that tag and if we select the wrist, now the wrist joint is oriented correctly. Okay, so now we can start setting up the hierarchy over here and kind of straightening that up. So what we want to do is select some of these objects that are going to be a child of these nulls. So we'll start with the wrist object and we know that this cylinder here as well as this object down here which is acting as the hand, these two items here are going to be a child of that null. So I'll select both of them and we can just drop those into that wrist null object. 
So now we can do the elbow. So we know that this cylinder, as well as the cube and this object here, which is acting as the forearm, that's going to go inside of the elbow joint. So we'll drop those into the elbow. And then we have this cylinder as well as this one. And this is going to go into the shoulder joint. All right, now for the base, we'll come back to that a little later, but I'm just gonna drag that down to the bottom and I'm gonna take this top portion and just make that a child of the base object. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the elbow root null and make that a child of the shoulder null. And then we wanna take the wrist null and make that a child of the elbow. Now we have our joint chain, or in this case, our null object chain. Okay, so now we can start setting up the IK for this arm. So what we're gonna do is select the shoulder joint and then hold down control and select the wrist. And then we'll go up here to character, commands, create IK chain. Now you'll notice that it created a null for us up here at the top. This is the controller object. So if we move its position around, you can see that now the arm is rigged and working properly. So we can also do this with the CD Tools plugin. So I'm just going to undo this a couple of times. And we're going to do this the same way. So we'll select the shoulder, hold down control, select the wrist, and then call up the command for the CD IK setup. So if you don't have yours docked in a palette, you can get to that by going to Plugins, CD Tools, CD IK Tools, and then go down to CD IK Setup. Now, as you can see, there are quite a few different options that you can use here. But seeing as how this mimics a human arm with the shoulder, elbow, and the wrist, this is going to be a limb IK. So with the limb IK selected, everything over here looks good. So we'll click on Setup IK Chain. And now it should be ready to animate. So if we look over here at the top, it's created two null objects for us. One of them is the pole object, which is up here at the top. You can see it there. And the other one is the controller. So the tip goal is the controller object. That's the one right there that you want to animate. So you can move that around and you can see the arm is working properly. All right, so now we can set up the base. Now, if you've been following along with this series, you should already know how to do that. But if you forgot or if you weren't paying attention, I'm going to show you again. So if we select the base, you can see that the axis is pointed in the wrong direction. We want to be able to use the Y axis for the up vector. So we want to grab the rotate tool and we want to enable axis mode and we want to rotate this down 90 degrees so that the Z axis is pointed down but you can see that the Y axis is pointed in reverse. So we just want to spin this around 180 degrees. So now if we select the base, hold down control and select the controller, which is the tip goal object, we can call up the command for the aim constraint and we don't want to set the target. What we want to do is set the up vector. So we'll click OK. And now we can animate the position of the tip goal and it should be working, but there's a little bit of a problem. You can see that it is rotated off to the side. It's kind of like pitching over. So I'm going to undo that. And the problem here is that we have this pole object up here. And if we were to look at this from the front and if I were to move this back and forth, you can see what that pole object is doing. So this pole object, it needs to stay centered. Otherwise, it's going to cause the arm to rock back and forth. So what we want to do is we want to make it a child of the base. And now if we select the controller and move it around, you can see that now the problem has been solved and now everything is staying straight and aligned. All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part. I mainly just wanted to go over some of the basics here to show that when you're using IK to rig your mechanical objects, you don't really need to use bones. As you can see here, we use the null objects to do that in place of bones. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.